I think we should watch him as well. Mark Trantor we mentioned before. So it's a good quality field here. The revs are raised. The cars are away. And we're on board with Will Hunt as well. But as the green flag flies here, into the lead is the 32 of, of Patrick Gerber. Mackay Stevens behind him. And that was Will Hampton. Oh, it's a beautiful pass by Stevens there on the inside. It was really waiting for, uh, for a hole to open up there on the inside of turn one. He immediately went down there, bring the car into the turn, making sure he stands right on the apex and not let anyone else pass. You now he's hunting down Patrick Gerber. Gerber has sim racing experience, you actually know him. I hope so. Will not be an easy one to pass, for example. Not at all. And you can see Mackay Stevens. is trying his best at the moment. Oh, a huge lunge under brakes from Mackay Stevens. If you're watching that little box in the, the top right hand corner. Patrick Gerber has got plenty of work to do here if he wants to keep Mackay Stevens behind him. The cars are getting extremely tight. Some dust being kicked up. On the side of the circuit, drivers trying to find the last inch of the racetrack, the full width of Danvor. And now it's Will Hunt and JK. Mark Transit also in the mix there. Love this vision of the camera shaking with the cars rumbling past and also screaming motorcycle engines. It's an amazing concept, the Radical SR3. And Mackay Stevens using that new wheel to his advantage. He's on the tiller a fair bit, isn't he? He's really, he's really working that wheel hard. A lot smoother than uh, Patrick Elba in that part of the track. On a lot of ground there, close to the gap to a few meters just. Left with everyone else behind them fighting already. That's one and a half seconds of gap for these two that you now often have on camera. But Chasing Groom is also at the action closer with Juan Trenta and uh, Garrido, JK also in that mix. But Patrick Elba, it seems like he will have a task in the next. A lapse that is to make sure that Steve stays behind him. He's looked really dialed in with the car already. He does, doesn't he? And as you say, he's working hard behind the wheel, but in terms of how smooth he is, it, it, you're right. The car from the outside, he just looks smooth. He looks comfortable. Patrick seems to be just feeling the pressure, I guess. And Mackay, a little nudge there, a little love tap and a slide from Mackay Stevens. So he's really pushing hard now. He's giving it everything. And all so close to another tap as they go into that right-hander and through the banking. Like carting ball that's already, making sure that Gerber is aware of him being on the back and that he wants to pass and once again showing himself on the inside. Going down through one now, switching to the outside. Gerber trying to defend up the inside. Is there a chance back to cross him here? No, Gerber making sure that this car is as wide as a radical can be. So Stevens, no chance to pass, but look at the background. Look, Anton already coming closer, bringing our top three all together here after we're halfway through the race. And it seems like Gerber is really in the way of Stevens right now, opening this, this battle here to three drivers now. Yeah, the, the battle up front has allowed, as you say, Ingo Anton to close up. It'll be interesting to see if Mark Granter can make some make his way up through to this top three. It'd be fantastic to have the battle turn into one of four or five cars in the last lap. But there's still a lap and a half to go. And Mackay Stevens again working this hard. He's pushing extremely hard. A little bit of a kick up of dust. You can see how much he's closing under brakes, that concertina effect. The car in front on the binders before the car behind. Mackay's got to be careful, he doesn't want to make the wrong move and perhaps break a little bit too late. He's got to think about his exit speed as well. Anton now right on the rear bumper as well. So, as you said, this is definitely a three-way motor race. 
the curbs are being used, even a little bit of the dirt from time to time. Yes, our three sliding around this new surface just a little bit. And here we are to start lap four. Oh, on the brake, look at how Steve moves around to not get into the back off Gerber. And with that bringing in Anton on the outside, that was the first time that Steve now realized there is a third one, there is another one that wants my spot. And Anton is on a really great run right now. We see that, he's starting off the inside of Steve, it's right behind Gerber. It seems like he can make the pass, it's 180 degree left, banking through, but Steve has so much traction on the outside. Yeah, absolutely, and I think you're right. Stevens didn't know what had come, what was coming alongside him there. He all of a sudden had had Anton in the background. And now that the pair of them has allowed Patrick Gerber to just pull away a little bit, he'll be sighing a, a bit of relief in that cockpit. Oh, and there's been a touch! Around he goes! So Anton... Ingo Anton has made a mistake and it's allowed Mark Trandon to move up to third place. Not quite sure if it was Stevens just shutting the door or Anton being a bit late to actually dive in there. That was just really just a small part of that radical thing on the inside of Stevens. But unfortunately, they made contact and with that, Anton spun around losing one position here. But that also means that Patrick Gerber is still on the lead while we're nearly at the end of this heat race. And Stevens still on his back, still part basically of that rear wing of Gerber's sabbatical. Vision. I just love this shot with the camera shaking and it is Patrick Gerber who takes the win here from Makai Stevens and there's some bit of, a bit of crash and pass there and they're not done yet oh sorry there's one more to go isn't there we're on lap five now so side by side Gerber and Stevens actually quite surprised by how good Gerber's handling this right now. We see that Stevens is really pushing. He's a bit tighter in the corners, using a bit more every inch of the track that is available to him to get closer uh, to Gerber. We also know it's one thing to close the gap, another to pass someone. And so far, Gerber doing an impressive job here, making the radical wide, making sure that he stays on top of it. Absolutely, and here we go, having a look to the inside. No, just applying some pressure. So now, having a look around the outside, a little bit more curb. The Stevens, he's doing everything, isn't he? Look at that, trying to squeeze the power down. The, the back end steps out a little bit, having a look to the inside, around the left-hander. Completely different line. Yeah, can he make it stick, though? That's the question. He's got to find a way to get the car alongside Patrick Gerber. Gerber is doing, as you say, an impressive job. Oh, the car behind just sliding the 13 of Stevens. It's looking crazy though. He's just got to wonder if he can make a move. Where is it going to be? He is running out of lap time and running out of time to make this stick. Torino coming on to start for the straight of Long Lake on the new Zambra. There it is. Stevens tries to go alongside Gerber. They're both running over the line, but it seems like Gerber has taken the win and he to Stevens right behind him. 0.02 of a second. And look at that, the same between uh, Garrido and JK. So close racing with the new reticle all over the place. Absolutely.